are here today with Chef Chris from the Culinary Arts. We um, have been out fishing with our kids. What you can do with the fish after you catch them. So, Chef Chris. Okay, so a couple things to remember with our fish. Um, especially if you're not a big fisherman but you like fresh fish, uh, you want to you wanna pay attention to a good fresh fish will spring back. Okay, if you can see that, the, uh, the flesh will spring back. Also, the gills have been removed on this one, but if you've got a whole fish, if the gills are red, when you catch a fish, all their oxygen comes through their gills, and so they'll have bright red gills, and that's how you know it's fresh. And we can also see a clear eye. That's how we know it's fresh as well. Those are things we're gonna be looking for. The filet of fish, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do, obviously, is gut it, remove the guts. That's been done. Then we wanna cut all the fins off. Now the belly fins are going to have kind of a bigger, a bigger uh, bone that are attached to them, and so it's okay if you get a little bit deeper on them. It makes for an easier fillet. So I don't know if you can see on the inside, but if you notice when I move this, we've got a big deep right here. There's a big bone right there. Cut the anal fin out, and every fin except for the tail is going to be a little bit easier. Once we've removed all the fins, and a pair of kitchen shears are the easiest. I want to make sure that the fish is nice and dry so it sticks a little bit to the cutting board. That helps for filleting. If it slides around, you're going to cut yourself. I like to use a chef's knife. If you don't have one, you can use a fillet knife. Some people use those. The reason I use a chef's knife is it gives me more um, surface area to control the cut. First thing I want to do is I want to pull it right to the edge so I'm not contending with my hand. Because if I'm up here, my, my blade doesn't stay nice and flat with the cutting board. Okay, so I'm going to cut the head off first. Just right down through that behind the gills. Okay, make sure we're wiping our blade to get all the scales and stuff. I like to get a little towel to kind of give me a little grip. Is I want to cut right at the back of the tail. And what we have is we have a backbone that runs, I'm going to go flip this over. Backbone will run right across here. And as the fish grows, if you can see, I'll have little rib cages that grow out that way. Okay? I want to cut along that backbone, straight down the fish, and remove the rib cage. And you'll hear it, if we're nice and quiet, you might be able to hear that. And that's the rib cage that we're removing. Okay? Just heard a little bit. You hear that? Okay. We've got our fillet. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and move to my boning knife. And I want to feel for here the rib cage, and I want to just make sure I get between that backbone because I want to get right between the, the rib cage. That's what I want to move off. So I'm just, when I push this, um, and it's easier for me to cut it this way, sorry. But as I cut, I'm pushing the knife up against the rib cage. Okay? That's going to help remove all the meat. Because if I don't remove this, then I'm going to I'm going to have bones in my fish. Nobody wants that. Okay, and then I want to go back and fill for anything that I, I have. Now with most fish, especially, this is a three pound trout, which is unusual for, for the size of the fish we'll catch around here. But if I push my hand back this way, you'll see itty bitty little pin bones, okay? Now if it's a smaller fish, like one pound or smaller, pin bones I wouldn't worry about. They're gonna be too small. But where this one's a little bit bigger, you can get a, a pair of pliers works best but I'm gonna to try to get one out with the scissors. You can remove the pin bones. There's only gonna be one or two little, little bones in there, so it's not a big deal. At this point, I'm gonna look on the edge and it looks like I've got a little bit of piece there that I wanna remove. And just a little piece around the skin. So anything that looks like it could be undesirable, you wanna remove. I wanna clean up my cutting board. Now we're gonna skin them, okay? So. We want to clean our knife again. And when we skin them, it's the same thing. We want our knife nice and flat and our skin. Let's move 
these out of the way. Okay, our skin nice and flat. And as I start to skin them, so I always have to start it first. And once I start it this way, then I flip it back. I'm kind of weird. I do things a little, a little backwards. Once I start it here, I can fold that fillet up. I can make a little cut in my skin. I can put my little finger through, and it's gonna, it's gonna help me hold that skin back as I skin it. Okay. So now I'll re reinsert my knife, and I want to make sure. That's why I'm not up here because I won't be able to get it nice and flat. So as I fillet, I'm going to pull that skin and I want to just stay nice and flat. What I end up with is removing that skin right off and I have a beautiful fillet. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clean our cutting board. And we'll check this again. We've got one little piece here. Look at that beautiful fish. This is a traditional French uh, cooking steaming process. It's called in papillon. And it's basically parchment paper. We're gonna lay our fish down here. You can put two pieces in there, but we wanna go ahead and remove our gloves now. So what I've done, and I'm terrible at this, so you kids can have a good laugh at home. I'm terrible at, at art, so my kids will tell you. You wanna cut a heart, and this is a terrible heart. So, <laughs> you can see it's a little bit more like some type of a shield. But once you've cut your heart out of your parchment paper, or wax paper will work, okay? I like to add a little salt, pepper, a touch of tarragon. Tarragon will have, you can find this in your dry herbs or fresh herbs um, that are easy to find. Tarragon has kind of a, a licorice smell to it, but it's very traditional French, it's, it's very good. And then we want some nice, I like unsalted butter. So we're gonna add a little butter onto this. And then I fold it over and I proceed to, we wanna start at the top. We wanna try and get it nice and even. And we'll fold it over. We can get this out of the way so you can see. And as we start to fold it, I'll kind of fold them over themselves. We'll continue to do this all the way around and this will help lock in the steam the butter the flavor and I'll have a little pocket of deliciousness that'll bake in the oven okay now when I get down to about right here if I can get it folded over I want to make sure that I really press this down when I get down to about right here I like to take a little hole and I've got a little white wine here, okay? And I'm gonna take my saute pan that I'm gonna put in the oven. Any baking sheet will work. And I wanna put a little white wine in it. Okay? I'm just gonna come back here. And as I fold it over, got that nice little ring all the way around okay I can set it in inside my pan I'm going to take the rest of my white wine just get a little now you can use fish stock chicken stock water Mountain Dew um, anything that you want as a liquid to flavor it um, and then we're going to throw this in the oven at 350 it'll cook for usually a smaller fish like this or a whole fillet if I want to will probably cook between 10 and 15 minutes you're just going to want to watch to see if it flakes away. Um, and we're going to throw this in the oven, then we'll come right back and we'll pop it open. You'll see the steam come out. It'll be nice and delicious. A lot of times when you go to a restaurant, they'll serve this whole thing on your plate and they'll sometimes cut it right open or for you. And you see all that steam rise. And what we've got, we'll pull it right back for you. It's a nice, delicious steamed fish look at that all that flavor right over it flake it right there see how we've got a perfect it's not overdone just nice pink meat cooked all the way and then you can take and when you serve it you take a little of this wine and butter sauce and you can just spoon it right over there mm, delicious we just met with chef chris we cooked up some fish 
and we have it for you guys to try. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> kind of. Okay. Ooh, so, try. you guys all, can you see that? Let's take a little piece. Everyone, come try it. Tell us what you think. Mm, how it tastes. That's so good. Mm. All right. Oh, yes. good. <laughs> Was it good? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good. Mm. All right, you guys. Um, one last thing that Chef Chris wanted us to tell you: with all of the scraps from the fish that we filleted, you can take those, throw them on a tray, uh, cook them a little bit, and then you can take those scraps out and give them to your chickens. And the chickens will peck off all the extra meat that are on the bones and stuff, and it's a great protein to give to your chickens. Um, and to be able to share with your family. So go out in the outdoors, go catch some fish and bring it home when you guys can have something fun to eat.